after having discussed about the various types of anti-anginal drugs, now let me discuss what are the types of angina, what is the basic pathogenesis in that type of angina and what are the drugs we used in that particular types of angina. So you take this angina as we have already discussed we have three important types of angina. Those three important types include stable or typical angina. Next is the unstable angina and the third one is the prince metal angina. Right, the third one is the prince metal angina also called as the variant angina. Right, also called as the variant angina. Now, angina is one of your the coronary artery disease. Now, first let me discuss about the stable angina. Stable angina, it is caused by the coronary atherosclerosis. Right, it is caused by coronary atherosclerosis. Because of this coronary atherosclerosis, coronary atherosclerosis means what? Within the coronary artery, there is accumulation of the fat that is called as the coronary atherosclerosis. And because of this coronary atherosclerosis, this will cause progressive, right? This will cause progressive narrowing of the blood vessel wall. Right, progressive narrowing of the blood vessel wall. So whenever there is progressive narrowing of the blood vessel wall, this will decrease the coronary blood supply or this will decrease the coronary blood flow. All right. So in stable angina, the basic pathogenesis is coronary atherosclerosis due to which there is progressive narrowing of the blood vessel. Thereby, there will be decreased the coronary blood flow. Whereas, you take the pathogenesis in case of unstable angina. In case of the unstable angina, what is happening is, in case of unstable angina, the individual will have the chest pain or the angina at rest itself. Now, how is this? What is the basic pathogenesis in unstable angina? It is caused by atherosclerotic plaque rupture. It is caused by atherosclerotic plaque rupture. So, in unstable angina, what is happening is now consider this is a coronary artery vessel. Now here you are having the atherosclerotic plaque. When this atherosclerotic plaque, if it is progressively depositing the atherosclerosis, there will be further narrowing of the vessel wall that will result in stable angina. Whereas in case of unstable angina, what is happening is, you consider this is the blood vessel wall this atherosclerotic plaque it gets ruptured whenever this atherosclerotic plaque it ruptures that will stimulate the platelet aggregation right atherosclerotic plaque will precipitate or will stimulate the platelet aggregation not only it stimulates the platelet aggregation it will also, this atherosclerotic plaque rupture also stimulates the coagulation pathway or it will stimulate the coagulation system. So, whenever there is atherosclerotic plaque rupture, there are two things which get stimulated. Number one, platelet aggregation. Number two, activation of the coagulation pathway activation of the coagulation pathway so whenever there is platelet aggregation 
along with activation of the coagulation system that will cause the occlusion of the coronary artery that will cause the occlusion of your coronary artery and thereby the myocardium will not receive adequate amount of blood supply and thereby the individual will have this particular angina so in stable angina it is due to progressive narrowing in unstable angina it is due to platelet aggregation and as well as activation of the coagulation system secondary to atherosclerotic plaque rupture whereas you take the prince metal angina prince metal angina it is due to the coronary vasospasm right it is due to coronary vasospasm right so this is the basic pathogenesis in all these three types of angina stable angina or typical angina due to progressive narrowing of the blood vessel wall unstable angina due to block rupture there is complete blockade of the vessel prince metal angina there is coronary vasospasm now let me discuss in detail about the individual angina about the stable unstable and as well as the prince metal angina 